What is up YouTube? My name is Calvin. I go by Calso Scope. I'm going to be showing you guys a complete layer breakdown from how I got to this picture to this picture. So without further ado, let's hop right in. Alright guys, so starting off the video, I'm just on this blank black screen that I had, but uh, I'm just going to go part by part. It's not going to be a tutorial, but you guys are really going to see into the mind of my creative mind, I guess you would say. So. The first layer I want to bring about, um, this is just the the kind of lights that I brought in. And to do this, all I do is I go on the brush and I use a soft brush. Usually I put the flow at around like 51 or something like that. It always depends. But the thing that I do with the brush here is I go into the brush settings up here. And to make alterations to your brush, you can just go to your shape dynamics and turn your size jitter onto 100 because you see this line right here. That makes your size of your brush like move around and that's something that's really cool to use um, when you're doing uh, just any type of edits. Just if you want to add like little lens flares, you can add that because it's going to make your size jitters different. Then I go to scattering and I also turn that on so you see, you see that? That's their preview of what the brushes are going to look like, right? So look at all that, just like a whole bunch of size jitters, right? And that's what I use. And then smoothing, I keep that on about 10. So that's pretty much how I do that part of it. And then opacity jitter as well if you want to just mix up your opacities, right? So then I would just add a layer. I'm just going to go over from what I already had. I would add a layer and then I just put them in like that. So see, that brings about some new like flare to your, to your design. And that's what I added in the front of it. But we're not even worried about the that right now because that's just on for later. But I just wanted to start off with that just because it's a really good thing to use. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna pull up is my folder with Kemba and Tatum, the base photo. This is the base photo, but then I masked them out. So here is them masked out right here. And I used the pen tool to mask them out very, very carefully, right? Very, very carefully, I went through and masked them out. And then I added a whole bunch of exposures and different things. I'm gonna play, the speed art's gonna be playing while I'm explaining, so you guys are gonna see my process of really lighting them and all that. But yeah, man, so I used exposure, hue, hue, and I used like three copies of hue and saturation because I just wanted to get those different balances of color. And I really am starting to focus on getting my light sources really nice and just really precise. So just don't be afraid to go in with your lighting and your colors. Like it's just going to make your designs a lot better and you just got to have patience. And the thing that I do now is, so say if I add a hue and saturation, I'm just going to add like a, a new one just because just to show you guys. I'm just gonna put on like red or something so we can get a difference. So I invert the mask usually so I can press control I to invert the mask so you can't see it at first, but then I turn my brush to white. So you have your black and whites. So you to get your to your default you press D on your keyboard. But to get to your white, because white is gonna reveal from the black layer mask, right? So I go on my whites and then I'm gonna reset my brush. Whenever you're you're done with a brush, make sure you reset it. So I reset my brush and I turn my flow to about I'll turn it down to like 40 or something like that just to begin and start seeing where I want to just add lights and see how that's just quickly adding lights without a light source. That's just really, really, really good and it's going to be really useful in your edits. So make sure you guys are doing that and take your time with the lighting. Like if you see something that you don't like, just right click on your mouse and you can alter your hardness. You can alter your your size with a with a brush and then turn it to black delete parts add parts in like it's all part of the process that you're gonna have to do and just take your time with lighting okay so those are my two lighting sources i'll show you the before and after of both it's a pretty big change so that was just before just normal and then now we're adding all our adjustments back on so see very very uh precise and just I just experimented a lot and I got precise and I did my thing with this so I, th I like how it came out. Just want to give a quick shout to sportscases.com. If you guys are looking to jazz up your phone with the latest NBA, NFL, MLB and more pro sports, head over to sportscases.com and use code CALSOSCOPE for 10% off. Okay so now we're going to move on to the next part. This is the background elements. So the background elements were really cool to just mess around with. Um, I used a color fill of just really dark dark black and then I unve unveiled it a little bit with a layer mask but not too much because see it was blue before or green before but I, I just made that dark green you can almost see it's like black but you just want to make sure you get those tones in there that kind of match with your subjects right 
and then for the second one I made the whites just darker because I didn't really see the whites going in as that cool I didn't like them that much and then this is the fog behind and then my particles my particles is literally just a a uh, particle layer uh, you can't see behind that hold on let's go let's go to black see that's just a particle it's just a file that I have but particles are really good to use in your designs because it just gives you some variety to your designs so we use that over there I'm not gonna save it and then blur gallery so what I did with a lot of the particles I used blur gallery so instead of using Gaussian blur I've learned that blur gallery is really really good for your designs right so Blur Gallery is really good and it has a, a lot of different types of things. So if you go to Blur Gallery, it's in your filters, Blur Gallery, you got Field Blur, Iris Blur, Tilt Blur, Path Blur, Spin Blur. The ones that I really use right now are Field Blur, Tilt Blur, and Path Blur. Field Blur is, Field Blur, okay, I'll just explain it really quickly. I can go into depth in a different tutorial, but Field Blur gives you a more of a range for your blurs. So if you wanted it to blur from top to bottom, you can pick actually the blur that you want to have from here then it's going to transition up to here so you can just select different blurs in the amount of pixels that you want to blur things out at. and that's really good because it gives you a more realistic thing besides if you're doing just Gaussian blur if you do just Gaussian blur it just blurs the whole thing and there's no variety within the blur it's all going to be the same amount of pixel blur within so that's why I started using blur gallery um, on that one I used so on this one I used uh, which one is this tilt shift so tilt shift gives you a range that you can just mix maximize or minimize and the range that's not going to be blurred is within these two solid white lines these two solid white lines is what's going to not be blurred so so you want to keep your subjects in focus so I, I thought the focus point was about right on their jersey so I kept that really really in focus and then and then yeah so you can just alter your alter your um, your blend of blur if you want to call it that with this slider right here and that's gonna give you a lot of variety okay so that's what I do on my particles and then I called this GG one this is just the green glow first green glow that I have this is the second one that I put on there and this is the third and the thing that I did with all these green glows is I just put them there but once I was really done with the second one I put on linear dodge and what linear dodge does is it brings your colors to life okay so I'm gonna show you guys a quick example of linear of what linear dodge can do okay so let's just go up to we well, can just close out of this for now because this is the background element so explain that but let's just go up to a linear dodge and I'm gonna show you guys how linear dodge really works so say you put on a, a color right like here just put on put on a color right here and we'll just make it that color right there so this is where linear dodge comes in so you're going to add a layer above but turn it to linear dodge and you're going to see some magic work make it a little bit lighter and see that it, it applies from the layer underneath and it makes things under it glow linear dodge is really the a glowing type of layer it makes your things glow like very easily and you don't have to use outer glow or nothing like that it just makes your things glow very easily so that's something that you guys might want to use on there and I implemented on and that is what I implemented on Kemba and Tatum's glows so with their glows all I did was well not all I did because it took a while but I masked out their glows and I took a lot of time to just use it with the pen tool because you gotta be very very precise with these glows you don't want them spilling out and your work to just be not tidy and just not look as good as it should so I used the pen tool and I it didn't, it didn't matter how much time I took I just made sure I got those nice and just neat to glow alright so make sure you take the time necessary to do that and then the, the, the layer above that is lowers low darkens and all I did on the darkens is I used some of my smoke brushes and I just mixed in those colors I think the brushes that I used were down here I think I used uh, what did I use? Let's see. I think I used the 8mm brush. Yeah, 8T5mm. I think that says. I can't read. That's really small. But I used those brushes on there. And these really did the job for me. So I would just put one in usually on the bottom. And then I would blur it out. I'd use field blur once again. Once I was done with the composition. But these brushes are very, very good for, for smoke effects and fog. Because you see like it's very detailed but if as long as you blur it out a little bit it just really looks like fog and smoke so 
that's really cool that I use that and also you guys have been asking for brushes I can upload some brushes just let me know um, yeah so that was that that group and then we're almost done here my my third my last group is really my my debris right here my debris so what I did with my debris is this is I'll open up the file real quick it's just called light debris uh, debris that I have um, let's see it's just my light debris file right that's all it is is that file right there but the thing that I did was I also focused on my lighting even on the debris in this so I really want to just make sure I focus on everything in here so I'm gonna take these hue and saturations off so that's the normal and then I color balance to more of a green but then with my hue and saturation I added a little bit of lightness because I just painted on the parts that I see are reflecting off of that light in the background and I did that the same with my other layer and I just mixed them up a little bit to add some variety to these uh, these uh, debris this debris layer and then the last thing that we have on here is my lighting enhancements so my lighting enhancements I added like one more layer of debris but then I just went crazy with my my color balances and my color lookup so what you're gonna want to do when you're done with a image is use your color lookup so I already have mine done but I'm just gonna show you guys like my full list of color lookups like I have a bunch of color lookups guys and you can never go wrong with these I gotta I gotta manage them into a more formatted way where I know which ones I really like but you can never really go wrong with these and they set your set your image just very up very well and it can really enhance some things like if you're going to use color image sometimes you're not going to want to use the whole thing right so you can just add like gradients in or something like that so uh, what if you just add a gradient map in and only want to enhance the outsides or you can revert the the image and put it on the inside pressing x to do your duplicate colors because white's going to reveal black's going to hide right so that's just some things that you can think about when you're like done with your composition but you want to enhance your you want to still enhance your um your compositions right so also I, I just say just have fun with it just don't forget to have fun with your photoshop compositions guys and that's really how we're gonna just break down today's today's photo that i'm going over and if you guys have any questions or comments let me know down below with that being said stay scope guys peace